wedding day, I think we have to understand that most of my sisters have been thinking about their wedding ever since they were a child. It starts with Disney always telling us the happily ever after, but I wonder why they never showed us really the after marriage. This is why the sequel usually never is good. <laughs> ever since you were five, six, seven, eight, sometimes even four, I have a seven-year-old daughter who tells me, Daddy, when I get married and I say, Baby, don't talk like that. Jesus going to come back. <laughs> Before we have to deal with that, because I'm going to be that type of daddy. I'm going to be that loco, that, that crazy type of daddy. Thank you for the amen. But it starts with Disney, and then it starts with your dolls. We have Barbie and Ken. It starts at a young age, but for brothers, we weren't playing with Barbie and Ken. We were playing with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and... Power Rangers and Street Fighters and Mortal Kombat, Sonic Boom. This is what we have been playing with as a child. So therefore, we have one gender playing with love and another gender playing with war. Hmm. And now on this beautiful day, this ceremony, what do you do when love and war come together? I stand before you all as this Cuffing Season series is launching, talking about something that most people, if we're honest, we would say, I'm a slave to what people think about me. Because this is what we desire. I have my beautiful bridesmaids here. Don't they look gorgeous? And I have my handsome brothers here. This is what we want, right? We, we have the picture. We, we want the wedding, but do you know how to do marriage? Anybody could get married, but it takes another level of commitment. It takes another level of sacrifice to stay married. And if there's anybody under the sound of my voice and watching online, I don't want to just get married, but I want to stay married. And I don't want to just stay married, but I want to be stayed to the person that God has ordained for my life because I picked the lot. And on this day, I'm making a pick. But it's more about what you think. It's more about your acceptance. It's more about your approval. My bride and I have spent all this money and all this effort because we want you to post this. We want you to share this. We want you to feed our insecurity. We want you to make us feel worth it. And in this very moment, as my bride gets ready to come down the aisle, looking gorgeous, like seriously, she's coming down the aisle. Y'all can look and see her. My beautiful bride coming down the aisle. Y'all clap it up for my bride. My beautiful bride coming down the aisle. I'm about to do life with this woman, but y'all take y'all seats. Stop, beautiful queen. There, there, there's a problem here. I don't see a father. I don't see a father. I don't see a father. What happens when there's no father to give away the daughter? When she has no father in her childhood to scream me. But this is the day that she kept screening in her mind. Okay, it's the big day. I'm here. My father said he was going to be here, but just like everything else, he couldn't make it. Hmm. Something came up. But that's okay. That's okay. I wanted to look like I planned it this way. I wanted to be the center of attention. Yeah. I wanted to walk down the aisle. I wanted all eyes to be on me. Nobody needs to know that I'm about to throw up. Nobody needs to know that I don't know what I'm doing. No one needs to know that I am terrified. Why am I here? I don't know if I even like him. 
We spent a lot of money. It's too late to start not liking me now. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I have a, okay, I love you. Love. Not love, but like love. I love you. I love you. Like L-U-H. <laughs> I love, I got love for you. Okay. But I don't, I don't like love you. But I mean, it's okay. You're, you, we can work on it. We can, we can, we, we'll, we'll just go to couples therapy, but we can't make everybody look or think that, you know, yeah. we don't know what we're doing or I really, yeah. you know, I really am not sure about you. I, re I really had like 35,000 red flags. Hmm. Nobody knows that I, I almost bro broke up with you before you proposed. You almost broke up with all of this. Before you proposed. I mean, but it was so beautiful. He did such a good job. Hmm. Like every, I mean, he had my grandmother there, y'all. I love granny. My 92-year-old grandmother. Everybody was at the engagement. He had all planned out. I couldn't say no. I couldn't, I couldn't say no. That would have been embarrassing. People would have, you know. So I was like, okay, I'm saying, yes, I did the like, I did like the ugly cry, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did it, you know, and he, you know, and he did good. I couldn't say no. What would people think? It's not just you. It's not just you. I have a void in my life, and you're fulfilling it. See, months ago, we talked about all of our dysfunctions that we had. But in this moment, it's more about what they think. And you know what's the crazy thing I discovered about people pleasing? The more I have to say yes to you, the more it requires for me to say no to God. Because this is what we wanted. We want the wedding day. We want the flowers. We, want, we have a whole resort paid for. In this moment, you look stunning. You look gorgeous. But really, it's all for them. It's, it's not for the glory of God. It's not for the glory of God. You know why? Because many times people pleasing is fear playing dress up. I'm really scared. Just like you. But I have to look debonair like a man. But I want to go on couples vacations. I do too. Like, I want to be hashtag vacation like everybody else. Right. So, I mean, we can, we can make it work. We can we go can. to couples therapy, right? He's taking a picture. Let's take one. Hashtag power couple. <laughs> hashtag relationship goals, right? Right, right. We just, you know, we just have to, you know, I, I, I'm sure I can fix all the things. Absolutely. That, you know, you tripping about or that right. you're missing. Right. I'm, I, I think I'm woman enough. Mm -hmm. I think. Because you make... I, th I, think I'm, I think I'm woman enough. I mean, even though I'm, I'm super insecure and I care about what everybody thinks about me. But I listen, it's all right. It's okay. Those girls that talked about me in high school and told me I can't keep a man, uh, that's fine. I'm going to uh, show them today. Uh, You're going to show them today, huh? put a ring on it, there okay? You go. So I'm going to show all of them. All them exes, too. Listen, they, they, like, listen, they lost and you missed out. Show them the ring. It's show me. The ring. <laughs> you it's me. Out. Listen, so That's I mean, it's, it's okay. They yeah. don't need to know. They don't need to they know. They don't need to know that, I mean, I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know if I, I, I want to be married. I mean, it's just like the next thing on the list, right? It's the next thing. I mean, I just... So I just, I, that's the next thing to happen, right? Like, right. you know, I went to college. I got, you know, I, I got my got degree. degree. I bought, uh, you know, I, I bought my house. Check. This should be next. Check me. Right, right. I am the fulfillment of the list that you said. Right. That if God is good, he will provide you somebody. Exactly. By the time frame that you desire. Right. It, when you desire. Exactly. And here I am. I'm the answer to prayer. Right. I mean, I'm getting old. So we're not second, we're not second questioning and guessing anything because this is what we told God. Right. Not asked him, not prayed, but this is what we told him. Right. By this we, time, Lord, like you need to, you need to make it happen. So I'm just, yep. I'm fulfilling. There you go. I'm just fulfilling. This you know what God, what God, God had already kind of promised me, right? That's all it is, because He gives you the desires of your heart. Right. <laughs> Bam. We got our confirmation. Goals. <laughs> he gives you the desires of your heart. Yeah. You know, sometimes you complain about, um, you know, you want more of me, but. If I be honest, in the light of this people-pleasing, transparent moment, you know why I could only give you pieces of me? Why? 
because I was shattered before you met me. A lot of men deal with shattered, broken pieces of what does a man look like. So I listen to the hip-hop version. I listen to the legalistic version. I listen to the thought version. And you're asking for a whole me, but I don't even really know what a whole me looks like. I also, as a man, think I'm significant by my money, by me providing. You know what made me really feel like a man? That I helped fund this because your daddy didn't. But I helped fund this because that's what men do, right? <laughs> this is Sparta. That's what men do. We provide. Or is it more than that? And why is it I could give you everything that you're asking for? but you're really not happy. Maybe it's because fake happiness is the deepest sadness. Fake happiness is the deepest sadness. And we're still gonna go, with this, go through with this wedding. We have all these people, look. It would be a huge embarrassment. Right, If that we part. call this off. Facts, that And part. I cannot go through that it, it's, just, it's just not worth it. I mean, we can just take every step possible yeah. to make things work. And listen, my eggs are getting old. Your eggs. I need to have children Your by eggs. a certain time. I'm not trying to be geriatric pregnant. I'm not. <laughs> Your eggs. I want my eggs. I cracked. want my, I listen, it's time. I, I, listen, I am ready. I am fertile. I am ready. Yes. So we, it, listen, we'll just, we'll just make it work. I mean, mm -hmm. We don't even have to live in the same, you know, bedroom. Yeah. I mean, we, we could just, we could just, it, it can be an arrangement. There it is. And it doesn't even have to be like a, I mean, we can, we can have an understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, everything on the outside looks good. Right. But on the inside, the you know, it's, yeah. yeah, it's hell. Because, you know, for the most part, people never really consider how am I inwardly? It's more about how I look outwardly. When I walked on stage, Mrs. Flowers, before you came in, they gave me a cheer. But I could be a psychopath in my soul. But most people don't consider the inward condition because of the vision that they always want. You said that you want your eggs still to be fresh. You seen that thing I think was on Instagram. I want my eggs cracked. Right. Meaning I want a child. Now. <laughs> but... If God was so good, he would give you the answer to your prayer in the time frame that you know your body could line up with what you want to produce. So this has to be God's will. Because medically, because, you know, we look at facts. We right. don't just look at the word of God. Right. We look at facts. Right. Y'all participate. Somebody say facts. Facts. We go off the facts that I'm 37. We, we go off the facts that I don't know how long it's going to be until somebody else comes along because I was with somebody else right. three, four years. And so exactly. I don't have time to recover. I don't have time to just there it meet is. somebody else. Right. I don't want to go through. I am I ready. I want to go through that again. Another breakup. And then I have to meet somebody new. And then yeah. they have to get to know me. And then I have to mm -hmm. get to know them. And then we have to have this whole long relationship and there courtship. And I have to go through. I don't want to go through that again. I mean, I, I kind of know you. You kind of know me, we, right. you know, we'll figure it out. Right. I mean, I really, I really just want my dad. Honestly. Hmm. I've never really had the love that I wanted. I've never really had the security that I wanted. I've never really had the protection that I wanted. So I'm just trying to find the right type of man to love me like he should have. Yeah. And you, I mean, you kind of fit the... Uh, you do, hmm. but that's really what I want. Yeah. But I can't make, I mean, I can't make it seem like I'm not happy. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just smiling for the Instagram. <laughs> you know, I got my girls. Hey, y'all. <laughs> you know, they, they, you know they'll, they'll be, listen, they'll be here to support me, right? But you, right? Know, but you know one thing, um, well, actually two things. First thing, if you're looking for daddy, just call me daddy. That's, y'all be quiet. <laughs> if you're looking for daddy, just 
called me daddy. Most men love when women call them daddy. It could be big daddy, it could be chocolate daddy, it could be vanilla daddy, whatever daddy that you want it to be, you could just call me daddy. I wonder if this is why so many of my sisters call him daddy, because they don't even recognize they're really looking for him. But a counterfeit gets the label. And it's crazy that we love being called daddy in sexual moments. Sexual moments. But many of us are dealing with sexual issues because of a stepdaddy. That was supposed to be for my husband, not your perversion. And, and the second thing, I know you gave a shout out to all your girls, but I don't really like that last one. She the one that told me about you. No, she the one that she, told me about you. She, she the one that pray was on it. She, pray on it. Did you pray on it? She Did was the one that on? was like, I don't know. You, you know, are you sure it? you want to do this? Did are you, you sure? Is, are you sure? Because it seems like y'all arguing all the time. Y'all don't really get along. You really don't like him. Man, I mean, that. she just jealous because it's not her. That's all. She just jealous because this is not her. Everybody always, oh, just pray about it. Just pray about it. Did they pray about it? Remember that last time she was in a relationship, she called you talking about, girl, I'm so tired and all that stuff. Did she pray about it then? But then now when we want to get married, she got so much to say about me. I really didn't want her in the party because, you know, counterfeits can't stand when somebody can see a wolf. And a lot of times. She's been my friend since like second grade, though. Well, who you calling a friend? I trust her. Okay. I trust her. But you want me. I want to be married. There's going to have to be a time in your life when you decide between trusting God and trusting you. And you have to remember, remember Barbie and Ken, this is trusting you. Look. Look at this. The lights. The cameras. The action. This is what we desire. Come center stage. Come center stage. This is the moment that you desire. Lights on you, your moment. You dreamed about it, you got the earrings you want. You're a bridezilla, but you're here. This is what you want, and this is what it costs when you're a slave to people pleasing. Knowing all of the confirmations that God told you that I'm not it. This is what happens when you're a slave to people. But why can't I be happy? What about, what's wrong with me? Why is it that I see all these other women getting married, all these other women having children, all the girls I knew from college, hmm. all the ones from high school, all these other, all my friends, I'm tired of being the only one that doesn't have a ring on her finger. I'm tired yeah. of it. Yeah. I, deserve, I deserve to be married too. I deserve yeah. to have that same Im image. I deserve yeah. to have that same, I deserve it. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good woman. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm tired of all of this keeping it locked until the wedding day. You know how many Christian women always talk about, well, I'm worth the wait. And then they buy books and read it. How long? Are you going to wait? How long are you going to keep on trusting your God until you recognize when I come to give you your dream, you say yes to that? You say yes to that. Because it's more about this. I don't have my phone, but I wish I could look on YouTube, and I wish I could see how many people are watching. And then once the wedding is over, I can't wait to see how many people, you know, like it and share it and we're going to be considered a power couple, you know, and then when we go oh, to Cancun, dude, on that jet ski, though, all them pictures we're going to take and every picture of it's breakfast. It's going to look good. It's going to look good. It's going to look real good. Real good. But it doesn't feel good, does it? No, because I don't trust you. Hmm. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, you cute. Thank you. I yeah. mean, it's nice to have somebody, like, to do stuff with. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I wasn't there. Come on, y'all. Look at us. Everybody's smiling. We're about to take pictures and post them and get hearts and get likes and get subscriptions. And we're about to get so many congratulation messages. But 
I know I shouldn't be doing this. How many times will we allow God to show us red flags that we prayed for, but when we see the red flags, we do it anyway. This is the dangerous thing of loving with the paintbrush. Because when you love with the paintbrush, when God does show you the true colors of a thing, you'll repaint it. So right now, we may look happy. We may be smiling. Great photo, great moment. But we're making a great mistake. Because this decision is not about the glory of God. It's about the acceptance and the approval of people. Acceptance. 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 You know why I don't really know who I am? I was having this conversation last night. When you're a people pleaser, you end up pleasing people so much to where you lose you. And here's the crazy thing about being a people pleaser. Everybody else is pleased but me. And then, and then, and then let's go a little bit deeper. When I keep on people pleasing, I keep on displeasing God. I've been like this so long though. I really don't know how to change it. I mean, from the time I was a kid, I was always trying to make everybody else happy. Right. I was always trying to make my mom happy. Teacher. My friends happy, try to do everything right. I was, I, 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 I never really got to do stuff for me because I was always worried about somebody else. There you go. This is your moment then. This really isn't for me either. This is for you. No, it's not. It is. We it's have not. cameras, action. Look, it's, he's taking a picture. It is. It's not. It's not for me. Who's I'm doing this for everybody else. My mom's like, when are you going to give me some grandkids? Oh. And, my, you know, my sister's like, you know, you're not getting any younger. Yeah. Yeah, I have a brother that always, he always feels like he's better than me. You know, every time this Thanksgiving, he come around with his wife and his three children and my mama always talking about, see how your brother did this? You see how your brother, he's a real man. You see how your brother? And so sometimes I feel like I have to make relational choices to like secretly be in competition with him. See, I want to give you all a little conversation and you can eavesdrop on this. Men size each other up. We may not say it. We could be walking in the mall and I could just see you and I'd be like, I could take him. I don't know what it is. We just kind of size each other up professionally in, 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 in church. There are pastors who size up other pastor churches. We just constantly have this ego, and we're comparing myself with him. We compare ourselves with everybody else but Jesus. And there's some cars we compare. Jesus came in on an ass. I didn't curse. That's Bible. He came in on an ass. I'm thinking if I was Jesus, I would have came in on a chariot. You know what I'm saying? Hosanna in the highest. Here I come. When everybody said, I'm going to have a chariot, but Jesus came in on an ass. Made himself low. But I feel my significance is in how many zeros I have in my bank account and who I have on my arm. This is going to look good for our business. Businessmen who are married it just looks better on paper. It just looks better. So even though you may feel as though you're settling, I know I'm settling because you're a check for me so I can prove to my family I'm a real man. I'm a real man. And now when my brother sees me, he'll never view me as little brother, little brother. I got a wife too. We're going to have children. You talking about your mother wants children? We're going to have lots of them. Doesn't that sound good? It's awesome. Wife. Right? Like, I'm somebody's wife. Not girlfriend. <laughs> like, isn't it nice when, you know, somebody, like, my wife is calling me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you, see, you see the pictures, like, there's wifey. Right. I mean, I, I, I want to have that title, too. Like, I want somebody to call me their wife. I want to have that label, too. Like, I don't feel like I, you know, that's the next thing up. I don't feel like I'm really complete mm -hmm. unless, you know, somebody can call me a wife. Like, right. my wife is home or 
we're going on vacation, me and my wife, wow. you know, is. it's the holidays and my wife and I. Let's have everybody Doesn't say it. Th- Can I get everybody to say My wife. Doesn't that sound good? That sounds awesome. I Y'all deserve, I deserve that. Yes. And then also, it sounds even better when you say my husband. Right. Right. See, this it's is different. my husband. You don't this introduce my, me as your boo. You introduce me as your husband. Yes. That sounds it's so not, much It just better. sounds better. It does. So, you know, listen, we're not getting no younger. Mm-hmm. Might as well do it. You know what I'm saying? Sing the song. Yeah. Let's get married. Right? You know what I'm saying? That, that, that was on our it. playlist. Let's just do it. Let's just do, do it. it. We don't need confirmation. No. We don't. Listen. We, we'll make. We, we got this. We right. could do it. We could do it. Just forget, forget all that stuff that we were thinking. Forget all the red flags. Listen, it, it, it'll eventually go away, right? There it is. You, you know, And then me. when we have children, everybody says it makes us get closer. Exactly. Right. So... All we need to do is have a couple kids. All of those things will just go away. A lot of mini me's. Right. That's we're ready. It's awesome. So awesome. It's like we're not even considering destiny and purpose and 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 peace and and calling and what does God want and 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 His. It's like we're not considering none of that. No. It's the image. It's the image. You know what I think is one of the biggest problems. With our world today, we have an overexhausted exposure to everybody's world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when we were children, if it was Thanksgiving vacation, I didn't know what you did, bro. I didn't know what you did. If you had sweet potatoes, what, how did she say it? Yams, ham, peas, tomatoes, potatoes, you name whatever. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know what she had. All I knew was what I had. I in know my what house. she was cooking. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, could this be keeping us making wrong choices. Just a scroll. Instead of see, reason. Stop, see, look, this, see? See, they just got married. They did. Man. They look so happy. You know what's so they crazy? They look cute together. Instead of looking at his scroll, we're a slave to the scroll. I'm comparing myself with him and them, and, and then, look, they just got another house. Man. That's nice. Oh, they got two houses. They doing it big. Yeah. You see her ring? I do. That's nice. Don't, I mean, you don't know if it's real or not. Oh, Yours is good, too. Okay, so. you're, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, instead of looking in the mirror of God's word, are we looking in the scroll of everybody else presenting themselves to be something that they're not? And so you settle, and I settle so that we could impress everybody who settled. (laughs) Like, I don't really know, because you really don't know what's behind the retina display. I mean, this looks great. This is a beautiful moment, beautiful church, nice LED screen, it's beautiful. But we, we, like, people don't know how much we argue and how much we fight, how I call you outside of your name, how you disrespect me. You cuss can't even you out all the time. Cuss me out all like you are a creative cusser. Yeah. Like like some words that you be merging together. I, I just don't, and I'm holding it against you, and you're not gonna recognize it until you ask me to do something. Then I'm gonna bring out all the stuff that I didn't like. Yeah. Then you get really petty, and I'll get really immature, there and you then go. you know, we won't talk to each other for about two days. Yeah, but it's we'll have something to. They can now be scrolling yeah. and seeing us. Yeah. On Instagram, Facebook, Facebook. There it is. <laughs> Twitter. Twitter. TikTok. TikTok. Oh, yeah, we could go viral. We could be a couple on TikTok. Ooh, let's do it. We could do workouts. Yeah. You remember that old, that old Billy Blanks thing? Yeah. Dude, all we got to do. I got it. I got it. I got it. All we got to do, we can make a TikTok. Okay. And we'll be doing like these workout things together. Perfect. And everybody can see how we're working on our body. Right. But we're not participating in being the body. Right. All we got to do is make people think. That we got it together. We work out together. We have it all figured out. Once again, goals. There it is. All day. Yes, that's, and that's be, what I want. I want, I want, I want the goals. And I want they'll everything. think it's so funny when we right. hit that double time. Like Listen. when we're working out, we're like, double time, go, go, go. Like yeah. we're gonna get so many I'm views, done, so I'm, many heart, yes, heart, 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 heart. And everybody who dislike is a hater. I can't and everybody wait. holds me accountable. I know. Hater. They just and every pastor, they just want what we have. That's it. That's it. They don't understand. 
They don't understand this is your moment. This is what you want. Right. It is your life. You make the decisions. Your happiness. Right. You got to be happy. Exactly. That's what it's about is your happiness, your desires. Right? Right. 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 Did you just mouth at them you're not happy? Hmm? Yeah. I'm not happy. No. Wait till you see my anger issues. You're not being happy. You know what's the crazy thing? A lot of brothers don't like this, but the way you could really tell if a man is genuine is by looking at her face. Now, you can fake it in courtship. You can fake it when you're dating, but you're one of marriage, two of marriage, three of marriage. There starts to become a I don't care. This is why many times, like, I was at this pastor's retreat, right? And this pastor was preaching. I mean, he was preaching so, and God said, and the Lord's going to, and everybody was shouting, yes, and all that stuff. The first lady was looking mad. Y'all ever seen, okay, never mind. <laughs> It's because who I am behind closed doors usually comes on her face. Now, I could fake it because, you know, we're visual creatures. It's not just about what I like to see. It's also how I like to be seen. I'm so tired of pretending. I'm so tired of acting like have it all together. Hmm. I'm tired of acting like I'm happy and I'm really not. Yeah. I don't even really know how much, if I love myself. Hmm. I struggle with what I even see when I look in the mirror. Hmm. I never really felt accepted. Hmm. I always felt compared to my sister. Yeah. I always felt compared to all my friends. Yeah. And then I was always trying to make everybody happy, and I was never happy. Mm. And I just want for once in my life to say, this is something for me where I can be happy. Right. Right? Right. Right. This is your I'm moment to be happy. happy. And then, too, I don't know if they know this, but you know I love the weather. A cold front is coming this weekend. It's about to finally get cold. Right. And Houston, it is too. Like watch ABC 13 tonight. <laughs> it is. We're actually going to have like 52 and 53 and it's going to be great. Those are the lows. It's going to be great to have those temperatures. Right. We and it is officially cuffing, cuffing season. season. Cuffing season yeah. is from October the 1st until February the 15th. Right. Google it. This is not me just making up something to try to get you to get a point in the middle of this cuffing season series that you should not settle. Like literally, cuffing season is an actual thing from October the 1st until February the 15th. It's a season where you make unwise decisions all during the fall. It's a season where you make a choice to spark a season. It's a season to present somebody to your family. It's a season to have somebody to keep you warm like you don't have heat. It's a season for you to celebrate the holidays with somebody. Someone. Yeah. Last year was tough. It was COVID. Right. So now this year, you're going to have a husband. Not a boyfriend, but what? A husband. husband. I'll sounds keep you warm. Good. It sounds good. It looks good. Doesn't feel good. Huh. It's really not good. Hmm. I really don't want to marry you. I don't. But this was the next thing on my list. Hmm. I'm not getting any younger. I want to have kids. And I'm lonely. Yeah. So when you proposed to me, I said I do. Everybody was watching. Right. I didn't want to be embarrassed. You went through all this trouble. You invited my mama and my grandma. Yeah. So I said yes. Mm. But I have been, <sighs> I haven't been able to sleep. 
in months. Because I'm making this decision, this life decision, and I really don't even think this is right for me. Mm -hmm. I'm making this big decision that can affect the rest of my life and my children. Your bloodline. Because I'm afraid to be by myself for years and years and years. I don't want to be one of those women. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those women. You still not married yet? I have aunties like that. Right. I don't want to turn into one. Of, I don't want to turn into one of them. Singleness is a disease. Right. I get it. So I said yes. And I went through everything. Hmm. I got my bridesmaids. I got my dress, yeah. and now everybody's here, but I don't even want to be here. But this cures you from the disease of singleness. I know. You know, you know what's, what's funny? People pleasing in this conversation that we're having right now is showing me I'm just the fulfillment of your idea, not the fulfillment of your prayers. The idea of success. What does success really look like? And how does a Christian really have success? Like, like for me, success is how we look on paper and how we look together. But from what you just said, you're saying, I'm settling by getting my idea. I just really want like you as like an ornament. Right. Right. Just to wear me. Just like, yeah, like it just, it just looks good. Right. You know, yeah. I can change you every season. Mm -hmm. And I, and you know, then, and then when I'm done with you, I can just put you away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember before we met, I had a uh, very bad relationship. And you know, but I'm a man though, so we, we bury our pain. We don't talk about it. <laughs> the crazy thing about if I don't deal with, with what happened in my singleness, my illness will deal with me in our covenant. I haven't talked to nobody about it because, you know, they ain't really hurt. But the more I bury hurt, the more it keeps changing me. It keeps changing me, so I'm less affectionate because with her, I was affectionate. She would say, you too soft, you too soft. It's amazing how we let people change our makeup due to their opinion versus us really recognizing that if I don't fit for you, I may not be for you. And so I end up questioning myself because of somebody else that I didn't fit. I wonder how many people have a different personality because of a counterfeit who told them that their personality was flawed. I wonder who we became. See, when you spend so much time trying to become what you want me to be and 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 what they want me to be, I lose me. But this is a beautiful moment, right? There it is. So beautiful for a picture. Let's do it. Whatever is on my backside. Yeah, keeping appearances. Yeah, we don't want them to say nothing online, right? This is what it's all about, right? Look how happy my bride looks. She looks so happy. Or is there anybody in the audience? that can see that this smile that she has in this moment, this smile and this, this wedding party in this moment is not genuine, but it's fraudulent. And I wonder how many more smiles would you grin at people when the Holy Spirit the whole time is telling you, this is not me, this is not me, this is not my will, this is not me, this is not my will, this is not me, this is not my will, this is not me, this is not my will. But here we are, full wedding party, taking pictures because it's cuffing season. And we care more about man's approval than we do God's endorsement. And so what we have in this moment is a stage 
feel with people who have facelifts, but they don't have heart transplants. God is trying to change our heart from saying yes to the culture, but to say yes to Him. Because sometimes growth feels like you're losing and you're growing any and every time you tell God yes, but it requires for you to tell somebody else no. That's so real, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes growth feels like you're losing. Sometimes obedience feels like you're losing. What if you're not really in a losing season? You're in a winning season, but it's not a winning of people's acceptance. But you're in a winning season of what the Holy Ghost is calling for you to do. Let's look at the Bible because you, I understand that everybody has a compilation of stories. She is a compilation of stories. And I am a compilation of stories. And if we want our union to work, we must look at his story together. And if his story is in contradiction with our story, then our story has to become his story. Bars. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm just sitting here. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 it says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Amen. I think Paul is trying to let us know if you're really going to be sold out, you're going to have to let somebody down. If you're really going to be sold out your idea, you may have to let go. And as you watch us on tonight, Jesus gave parables. This man went to the field, and the kingdom of heaven is like this. I want you to see what many couples, possibly even this is their reality, they just couldn't vocalize it. Settle in front of everybody else. It's a dangerous thing when you will settle and spend money and settle. And not just spending your resources, you're spending your peace. Yeah. You're spending your joy. Look at this. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. It says, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by who? By who? God. By who? Y'all saying it real soft, so we're going to do it again when we can get it. On the contrary, we speak as those who are approved by who? God. God. That's it right there. What if... We have all of these ideas, and we're a slave to people because we don't know that we have been approved by God. Approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people but God. Can I get all of us? Let's get like old school, like 1992, how they do in old Baptist churches. Let's read this together. Can I get everybody to say, we are not, we are not trying, trying to please people, to please people. But, who? but who? But who? But who? But God. Not your mama, but who? But God. Not your feelings, but who? But God. Not social media, but who? But God. Not what people expect, but who? But God. Not your boss, but who? Not your mama, but who? But Not your friends, but who? But Once you recognize that you're approved by God, I can care less what you think about me. Amen. I can care less. And the reason maybe we're so easily offended is because you don't know you're approved by God. Amen. When we first started our journey, so many people had things to say about my wife and I or my preaching style, but I've been approved by so I recognize that God has called me for work and God has called you for work. And as long as I got his approval, approval, if they don't endorse it, that's their problem. Why are you trying to fix problems that aren't yours? I don't want you to be here. I don't want you to stand on a stage, have me officiated or any other pastor, and you do not know that this has been approved by Because if you make a choice, make a covenant with the individual, and it was not approved by God, you're going to keep calling on God. You're already going to call on God, but you're going to call on him a whole lot more. Y'all giving me golf claps now because we're not third person anymore. We preaching now. Y'all going to make me come out this tux. 
gift. You will call on God. It takes grace already with the right one. Say that again. Woo. If I, ooh, I almost threw this. It Say takes that again. grace already with the one that God has for you. There it is. So imagine. It's, on, not, it's not grace anymore. It's just foolishness. It's just foolishness. You're just entertaining foolishness if it's not God endorsed. Mm. And the sad thing is when we posted the, the, the snippet of the one he did of me talking to the counselor, we got so many comments and so many women saying this is 90% of women. 90% of women yeah. are in that state where they're like yeah. trying to find reasons yeah. to justify why they're still with someone yeah. that doesn't really love them. Yeah. And they don't even know why or if they love or if they love them, in mm. fact. Mm. So why would you even allow yourself to get to this point because of people? Because of a timeline? Yeah. Because of a list? Yeah. On your, a checklist on your box? I'm telling you now, it ain't gonna be grace when you get in that thing. It's gonna be a pure, it's gonna be pure hell. Yeah. And that's real. Yeah. So as we're saying this to you, this is, it's so much deeper than just colors and wedding and, and, and surface and, and, vacations and calling and having oh. the label I'm his wife and and he's my husband it's so much deeper and greater than that yeah because we see what society and we see what what culture people just get married yeah. yeah it's not a game it's not a game you don't just get married not if you want to do do it the right way now you can but I'm gonna tell you now it's gonna be hell I hope you're hearing me today. Yeah. And we are saying this because we love you. Yeah. We wouldn't be, I would consider us doing, like you say, ministerial malpractice. Yeah. If we wouldn't tell people, don't make this great decision mm -hmm. without God being in it. Yeah. Because I'm telling you now, I had no doubt when I was walking down the aisle, when I married this man. I didn't have a doubt. I wasn't scared. There was no fear. I, didn't, I, I wasn't getting cold feet because I knew what God had confirmed to me. And if you don't have that type of confirmation, don't you buy no dress, don't you take no ring, don't you walk down no aisle. You want to have God's confirmation. Forget what anybody else says. Forget how old you think that you are. Yeah. Because God has not forgotten how old you are. Yeah. Yeah. He is only God. He is, uh, he is only timeless. Right. In and outside of time. He created time. So he is not forgot about your age. Yeah. Yeah. You want to have God's endorsement. Period. And what, what I knew what to look for was because I knew what God called me to do in the earth. See, see, get this. I knew what God needed for me to do. I got confirmed in the dark before there was ever a light. And so for men listening to me, if you don't know why God made you, you won't know who is able to help you. Do you understand? She can help you with orgasms. She can help you look good on paper. But can she help you in your calling? There are so many people in covenant with no purpose because of this moment that we displayed before you. It was about this. It was about pressure from friends. But it was not about being approved by who? God. And I said, before we start... This whole series off, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough because I'm not just preaching popular content. I'm going to give you the Bible. I don't preach opinions. 
Personally, Jerry can't stand that. We need sound doctrine. And I need, to un- I need us to understand everything that sounds good doesn't mean it's sound or good. I need sound biblical doctrine. This is not old school. It's biblical. And I just believe the Bible works. See, in a lot of us, we feel like a relationship will make us safe. And as I was, as I was studying this, I'm going to share something with you. We're going to pray. You guys get something to eat. And then Cuffin' Season Series is going to really, really kick off next Thursday. Okay? This is, I want you guys to see, get this out your head. I prayed a crazy prayer. Y'all want to hear how crazy my prayer was? I said, God, help me on tonight to the best of my ability and by your power to discourage anybody who wants a wedding, but they don't want you. I want, I want for it to be vivid. I want to discourage somebody from getting married without knowing you. Make it crystal clear that this is a God-made institution. And if I want this thing to work, God has to be in the institution. I want it to wreck every woman who has an idea. I want it to wreck every man who has an idea. I want it to cause married couples to come to repentance. I want it to call kingdom couples to arise. A power couple is when we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is a power couple. Forget all this stuff you see on social media. The king's way works. We try to find security in other things, and the psalmist says it this way, Psalms 118, verse 8. It says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. if If I could just find my safety in God... God's going to reveal to me everything that takes me out of safety. Share something with you that's been messing me up. Today's been messing me up. I was like, okay, let's get through this because on next Thursday, I want to start really part two of this cuffing season series called I'm Under Construction. And I saw something I never saw before. Can I share it with y'all? God's going to have to give me more fresh content because it's been so good. Are you able to reward and appreciate stuff that's not finished. And so I got this from myself. Okay, God, this is a series that's going to really help us make wise decisions. And I went back to the creation narrative, and I saw something, y'all. Miss Flowers, hold my iPad so I don't throw it. I saw something that messed me up. First, evening was there before there was day, because there was darkness. And the spirit hovered over the waters of the deep. Okay. Then God said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit has to deal with our dark places before we ever get lights on us. I have to deal with that. And look, after God finished the first day, he said, and it's good. Now, this is the part. Y'all clapping because y'all don't even understand the revelation yet. This is the part that blew me. God could say, earth exists. And it's existing. Why did you take days? And look at this. He said it's good when it wasn't even finished. I said, whoa. And so God gave me a revelation. My people don't know how to appreciate stuff that's not finished. God said it's good on the first day. God said it's good on the second day. God said it's good on the third day. Are you able to look at yourself, know I'm not finished, but say it's good? This is so good, y'all. The reason many of us think we have so many issues is because we don't see God is dealing with your pride, and that's good. You went four weeks without watching porn. God is dealing with you, and it's good. Yeah, but I should never watched it, but you're changing. It's good. The metamorphosis of constantly changing and the Holy Spirit changing you into who he has called for you to be. Are you able to embrace that process? Phase one. It's good. Phase two, it's good. And so I said, God is showing me when he builds things, he does it in phases. He does it in phases. Get this phase out of your head. But the phase in the dark, that's where God and the Holy Spirit is going to breathe on 
Because until you really know me, until you know my voice and direction, until you know my voice and devotion, you really won't know it in direction. My goal is for us to understand that God desires holiness. That may sound old school, but he desires holiness. And as we were studying, I recognized a lot of our generation, our body wants sex, our heart wants love, but our mind wants Jesus. Did y'all hear what I just said? Our body wants sex, our heart wants love, but our mind wants Jesus. And I need the Holy Spirit to deal with all of those world war me's. Now it makes sense when he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Because a lot of us, you're torn between the body wanting sex, the heart wanting love, and your mind wanting Jesus. I want to do the right thing, but my body doesn't. The veil represents purity. Literally, as I was breaking this down, it actually means a hymen is still in place. And so when the husband removes the veil, this is symbolic of the covenant. When two virgins come together, there's blood. I know I'm getting kind of deep on y'all, but I can't just leave y'all out here, have the whole wedding, not you, and you don't understand this. It's a covenant. I want y'all to take this seriously. It's not just about who's cute. It's about a covenant. And I believe this with my whole heart. God needs more kingdom marriages. God needs more kingdom singles. We cannot have kingdom marriages if we're not kingdom in our singleness. Amen. 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 You understand this? He desires kingdom marriages. The earth needs it. The world's view of marriage is sick. And it's perverted. And they celebrate it. And it's not biblical. It's not. God needs more people who are willing to forget what the world thinks, not be people pleasers. Be kingdom in your singleness so that you can be kingdom in marriage. If that's what God has for you. The train. She didn't have a train. I asked her, I said, how much did this dress cost you? You remember how much it cost? Not what much. What much? No. This suit wasn't much either. I'm thinking like, man, people spend thousands. Thousands. And you didn't get approved by God? Bible says his train fills the temple. So I'm thinking of like kings, you know, a king wearing a train. And I shared this before that what it means when it says your God's train fills the temple. An ancient civilization, when a king would conquer a kingdom, he would get that king's robe and stitch it on his robe. Every kingdom he defeated, he would put that king's robe on his train. So now when the Bible says his train fills a temple, it's saying your God's undefeated. Every kingdom I conquered it. Every kingdom I conquered it. When she wears a train, I've conquered the power of the enemy. I've conquered doubt. I'm not perfect, absolutely not, because remember, phases. But I want us to understand that God created marriage. Get this out your head. Get this out your head so that we can get to the Bible. So that we can get theology in our hearts that can keep us from entertaining devils.